So, I would like to ask the question, how many of you in the audience think of yourselves as an entrepreneur? All right. Now, how many of you think of yourselves as an artist? So today, I'm going to talk to you about how do you build a business through the lens of a life, lifestyle that you want to live. So when I graduated from college, which was many, many years ago, um, I took my first job at Macy's uh, training program. And I was under the impression, because no one told me otherwise, that when I started at Macy's, that within three to four years, I would be the president. I would run the company. It'd be a multi-million dollar company. And that would be what I'd be doing. I told my husband, no need to worry. I'll take care of us. I'm going to rule the world. <laughs> and I got to Macy's and I moved very quickly up the ladder. And I got to you know, the supreme job that you want before you move to the next, which is to be a buyer. And I was then ready for the next, which of course was my presidency. And um, a gentleman that I worked for said to me, well, I'm really sorry. Um, women do not move as quickly as men in this company. And I thought, really? And at that time, Macy's had actually gone from being a publicly traded company to a privately traded company. And I knew just enough to be dangerous that if I wasn't going to get stock in that private company, I was out of there. And so I left, and I went into wholesale. And I ran a company in the wholesale uh, world. And then life got in the way. And I had these children. <laughs> and nobody actually told me that when I had children, I'd have to be responsible for them. I'd have to feed them. I'd have to clothe them. I'd have to make sure they were safe. And so then I began to think, well, I don't want to, I, I want to be present in my children's life, but I also want to use my brain. So how do I harness those competitive desires that I've had since I was, you know, came out of the womb and then still be able to raise a family? It took me a while to figure that one out. And it was when the internet arrived that it all came together. And I was able to basically run a company and raise a family at the same time as I sat in my basement with my headphones on and I could still go upstairs and bake cookies. My husband was working at the time. I had taken some time off before I went back to uh, the internet business in the mid-90s. And he was working in a venture capital firm. And in one week's time, as he was really one of the pioneers that was investing in the internet in New York, two venture capital firms approached him and said, why don't you come be a partner for us? And he didn't know what to do. Should I go with this firm? Should I go with this firm? And a really good friend of ours came up that weekend and asked the question that I have asked many entrepreneurs that you've probably asked yourself, which is, what do I want? How do I see my life in five years? That's like the pragmatic question. What do you see your life in the next five years? And when he asked him that question, it all came together. Well, I want to start my own, I want to own my own company. I want to run my own company. And so it allowed him to take that path, which was how do I get to the end game, which is I'm going to run my own company. And so he began his own firm. And so you should ask all of yourselves, what is your end game? And how do you get there? Do you ask yourself that pragmatic question, which we always asked ourselves, which is where do we see ourselves in five years? And so what's that path? Or what's the dream? Dream is defined as a cherished aspiration, ambition, or idea. So right now, I talk about this time that we're living in as startup nation. You know, it's a very, very interesting time to start a business. And all across the country, we're seeing businesses that are starting, that are small businesses, that become large businesses, and it's making a huge impact on our economy. Yet, at the same time, there's a creative boom happening. And there is a desire for people to explore their own, their creative side, and with that, make their own lifestyle. There are more options now to provide creative people the chance to launch their own business or provide supplemental income for themselves. So you can be an artist and an entrepreneur, 
and create a lifestyle business around your talents, your dreams, because there are so many platforms that you can do that on. You can do it on Kickstarter, Circle Up, Behance, See Me, Indiegogo. There are classes around um, many of the cities. Um, there are communities to be had where you can meet other people that are trying to figure out their creative side and what they want to do, it for, do with it for a business. You can be a photographer. You can be a filmmaker. You can make pickles. You can make ice cream. You can make a t-shirt company. You can make a hat company. And as an artist, to see yourself as an entrepreneur essentially takes on a completely different meaning. The definition of an entrepreneur is a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risks in order to do so. In my humble opinion, I actually do not believe that entrepreneurship can be taught, but it can be encouraged. Recently, I read a piece, I don't know if any of you saw it, a young woman who was working in a large company decided to take that creative leap, and she wrote this piece, and she used two words to describe what she went through, which is, should I or must I? Should I be an entrepreneur or must I be an entrepreneur? Should I be an artist or must I be an artist? And I really do believe that the most successful artists and entrepreneurs believe that it's something that they must do. That there is this fire in their belly that they have this desire to chart their own course. Now, you can actually embrace the must. And you can get up every day and be your creative self because technology has helped us choose the life that we want to live. So the question you need to ask yourself is, am I going to ask myself that practical question, which we did, where do we want to be in five years? Or the question is, what's the dream? So how do you build a sustainable business around yourself? I believe that career is no longer a word, that we no longer have careers, that the next generation of kids graduating from college could live to be 100 years old. So what you're going to do at 20 is certainly not what you're going to do at 60, but all those dots will connect, and you will learn from each experience as you go through your life. Work has blended into zero personal separation. It is a mixture of how you want to live your life and work and your brain and your family and everything else you do is mixed into one. So about, I don't know, maybe about a year and a half ago, I met this woman um, who is, has this life coach company. And she said to me, what's your dream? And I was like, dream? I don't, dream. I don't need a dream. Like, you know, I'm, I, I, I can't, I mean, I, I've got a great life. Like, I, you know, I'm very pragmatic. Like, I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do maybe 20 years ago, which was, open up a restaurant or start a food company. Like, I'm too old for that. I'm not going to do that. I know how many hours goes into that thing. No dreaming for me. And that concept of dream kept floating around in my head for the last, you know, year and a half. Like, what would happen if I dreamt big? You know, would it be like that entrepreneur taking that leap of faith into the unknown? You know, what was holding me back? You know, was I missing something? You know, I figured it out how to balance my brain and my life a long time ago. And then I kept thinking, well, if I could dream, I mean, what would happen if like, my wildest dreams were to come true? So I do ask entrepreneurs that same question that was asked to my husband years ago, which is, where do you see yourself in five years? Because I do think it helps you plot out the course of your life. And then about a couple months ago, I got the dream. And uh, a young entrepreneur that I invested in, who has a really interesting product, which has a social mission, she has had a very rocky road. And I think that a lot of people, when they become entrepreneurs, they don't say to themselves, wow, 
now that I have this product and this company and it's taking off, I have to go raise money, I have to create a culture, I have to hire people that are smarter than me, I have to um, create a work org chart, I have to think out of the weeds, I have to never sleep. And I don't think she really thought about those things. And all of a sudden, this business took off. And instead of really thinking about who she was going to hire, she hired a bunch of people that just plug in holes to keep everything going without asking for any advice. And eventually, the, sinks, the, the boat started to sink. Um, I've never counted her out because she's insanely scrappy. And she sort of has rebooted and figured out now what she's doing with her business. And she came to see me about uh, a couple months ago, and she told me what was going on. And we talked about where was her business going. And she always had this insane connection with the consumers. Like, she really wanted to sell this pr product directly to consumers. But the reality is, is that if she sold that product to businesses and created a business to business, it could be a really big business. And she had a hard time wrapping her head around which one, which one. And I said to her, it's your dream. You're the entrepreneur. I would never tell an entrepreneur, this is what you have to do. What's your dream? Do you see yourself just selling this product and talking to consumers? Or do you see yourself growing this huge business? You need to figure it out. And then, about a month and a half after that, um, I'm involved with a group of people. We do this founders breakfast, which is super cool because as investors, we sign, sort of know all the founders, but the founders don't know each other. And so we get together and we have this breakfast round table and founders can talk about sort of that echo chamber in their own head and what they're going through and so they can connect with other people. And this particular event took place at the stock exchange. I've never been down to the stock exchange before and it is a total Americana experience. And um, so we went down there after breakfast and of course I had this vision like, uh, you know, trading places, there'd be like paper being thrown everywhere, you know, it'd be crazy. And um, it's actually very calm and it's all computerized. And uh, one of the women that I invited to come, who was an entrepreneur I invested in, she turned to me and she said, you see that bell? That's my dream. I'm going to ring that bell. And I thought, oh my god, I get it. I get what she meant in terms of dreaming big. And so as creative people, you all have a gift. I wish I had that gift. I always wished, I wish I could paint or I could sing. Um, and those talents allow you the opportunity to dream about how you want to get up every day and what do you want to do because of those talents. The ability to dream about your creative desires and match them with the life dream is the road to getting up every day and being able to live the life that you want to live. So I would say don't be afraid to dream. It does not mean that you should quit your day job. It doesn't mean that there will be major fears. It certainly doesn't mean that there will be financial, um, it will be financially scary. It doesn't mean there won't be internal struggles. It doesn't mean there will be a huge divide from what really happens and actually having that dream be met. But dreaming sets yourself in motion to go down a path because you chose that road. So choose the road that works for you so that you get up every day, and you can make your passion your livelihood. That is empowering. So I leave you with the advice, which is dream big, dream small, but dream. Thank you.